everyone, Elise here. Welcome to day two of our mental strength classes. Thank you so much to everybody that watched, downloaded and completed yesterday's activities. I loved seeing your completed resources, your chimps, your drawings and what you named your cheeky chimpanzee as well. So thank you so much for sharing them. It definitely brought a, brought a smile to my face yesterday. Um, in yesterday's class, we looked at the three areas of our mind that determine our thinking. Who can remember what they were? We had the human. Now the human is full of facts, very logical, uses the truth. The cheeky chimpanzee that is very emotional, it reacts very quickly to things and of course helps us to survive in dangerous situations. And last of all, we have the computer. Very important. This is our advisor, our memory bank of how we responded to things in the past. And this is what the chimp and the human look to for advice to respond to things into the future. So very important that we are programming that computer with useful things. So today we are going to have a look at how all of these areas work together and how sometimes they don't. After a long day, you're finally on your way home. But there's been a crash on the motorway. You get stuck in the traffic and sit there stand still for two hours. You miss your sports class, your catch up with your friends and dinner. You eventually get home and tell whoever you live with and share your story and irritation with them. Trying to calm you down, they say, well, at least you're okay. If your chimp is in control, you might take their response as criticism and start an argument. If your human is in charge, you see the positive in what they're saying and feel lucky that you weren't harmed in the event and move on. This is a situation I'm sure many of us can relate to and have experienced similar. The chimp brain is negative, can tell lies, jumps to conclusions, often exaggerates, worries about everything and is very good at making excuses. Your chimp reaction is normal, but not always helpful. The human brain is realistic, objective, looking at all the facts and truths, and self-aware, aware of our thoughts and actions. It's calm and represents what you truly think is right and wrong. Think of the human and the chimp as colleagues, working together to run Brain HQ. The chimp is a big character. It's been there for years and likes to think it runs the show, sitting there with his feet on the desk avoiding any risk or hard work. The human joined the team years later and is more rational and considerate, but often gets overlooked. As soon as the phone rings, the chimp springs to attention, reaching over to answer it, reacting instantly. The chimp, of course, jumps to the worst possible conclusion. It asks the computer for advice and exaggerates the situation, hanging up the phone and it comes back and rants to everyone else, the human included, convincing them that this version of events is true. It then stomps to the computer to report on the event. Now, is this report going to be an accurate version of what happened? No. When the chimp is in charge, its thoughts, feelings and beliefs of an event get stored into the computer. These are not helpful because they don't represent the truth. And this will be used to advise us when we face a similar situation in the future. The problem, obvious as it might be, is that when the chimp jumps to situations first, the human doesn't get its own chance to assess the situation for itself. Instead, the human's beliefs are often hijacked by the chimp. If the human does try to have it say, the chimp will barge past it and bully it into defeat. So to gain control of the chimp, we need to give our human brain a promotion. The human is now the manager, in charge of the chimp, and in charge of what gets inputted into the computer. Why can't we just fire the chimp? I hear you say. Well, unfortunate as it might be, the chimp has been there for years and is an integral part of the team because we need our fight or flight response to run, literally sometimes. So I'm afraid, no bye-bye chimp. 
When we give the chimp airtime, it's representing the business, Brain HQ. And we'll say things that go against our values, which is not ideal. As manager, we need to think about who we give the voice to and keep that chimp in its office. This is an analogy we'll refer to a lot because our ability to achieve our goals is determined by our ability to persist through challenges and bounce back from setbacks, not opt for the risk-free route. The human brain is the one that makes this happen. The chimp is the one procrastinating and avoiding risk. So our chimp is sometimes not very useful to us. Use today's printables, download and print them off to investigate a time that your chimp took over and to come up with some useful human truths, if you like, some phrases you can use to calm your chimp. As I said at the beginning, I loved seeing your completed activities from yesterday. So please do share them with me today. Maybe pop them in a, a post, a comment on the post below. And tomorrow we are going to be looking at pretty much the most motivating thing I have discovered about the brain. So I hope to see you there. We'll be here again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Thanks for joining us and see you then.